she's back in the building again let's go but this is like what like this person this youtuber like jack thought that Veilgard needed to have like these are the choices that must impact the story okay and now we know this is from the future we know that not none of this is actually gonna be part of the game <laughs> new system is gonna have you pick key choices from the previous yeah, key, games the key choices there's such like like core choices to what the dragon age franchise is that if you didn't pick these three choices their whole story would unravel on itself i think like we all can agree on that like so many choices that are key to this story like did you uh solace who's the divine I don't, we don't care. Who's ruling for Elden? Who is ruling Orle? Should we tell him? Jack, I'm gonna hold your hand when I say this. Hans Zimmer made the theme song for this. It is painfully Marvel. It's, it's a song, but I don't understand how we got here. It's, there's no flavor to this. It's lacking in so many ways. We're almost a minute in. You hear the first five seconds of the Dragon Age Origins main theme you know it's Dragon Age Origins. That's 16 seconds in. Ten seconds in. Dragon Age 2. And you know immediately. You hear and you're like, oh. And Veilgard is like Marvel music. It is good because it's Hans Zimmer. But you compare it to any of his other work. Like Pirates of the Caribbean or anything like that. And it's kind of like, where is the flavor? Are you telling me that that's not just like a Marvel song? Really? Even this. From immediately. This is not even a good example. Because even the Avengers, you could, like, you hear the first three seconds of the Avengers theme. And you know exactly. You know what I'm talking about? It's just kind of like, I don't care that it's Hans Zimmer. I don't give a fuck. It could be God himself who made the song. If it's not hidden, it's not hidden. But I hope it helps you get a better feel for the weight of those lingering choices. So you can pick the ones that... And I love, we're listening, lingering choices, the weight of these choices. And the fact that you guys are telling me that this man went later on to make another video and be like, it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Nothing that I, I did matters, but it's okay. That's just fine. Um, Bioware cannot do any wrong. I trust them implicitly with my life and my favorite franchise. I just, you know, I, I trust that they can, they can do a, a really great job without really caring about anything that has been established for the past 15 years in the franchise it's gonna be fine and that says a lot i mean they're telling me things i already know about it yeah the rule of Ferelden, a hundred percent is it anora is it anora and the warden if you're a male warden is it alistair and the warden if you're a female warden and only a noble like you know did you sleep with morgan as a male warden did alistair sleep with morgan does she have a god baby or is it a normal baby? Do you spur the architect? Do you kill him? Does that matter? What about a hawk? Exactly. Who do you leave in the fade? And now that the fade is literally like, like the veil is like, it's staring. It's, it's cracking. Are they alive? Is there a possibility that hawk or whoever you left behind, if it's Alistair, it's Alistair, like that they can come back at all? Anything? The next rule of Orlay, I said this one. Who drank from the well of sorrows? It doesn't matter. That's it. Two out of how many? Two out of ten are 
relevant. What's not important who drank from the bottle of service, what it's really important who you f***ing the game because it's all about fan service. It's all about, and it's always been, about fan service since minute one when this game starts to like, get promoted. Also, couldn't you literally, Romans, what about that? Listen, listen, listen. Wasn't Harden a Romans option in Inquisition? So what if you're Inquisitor Romans Harden? The romance with Harden never goes any further in the base game and she won't offer any additional flirting. However, as long as you flirt with Harden at every available opportunity and not enter in a proper relationship with anyone else, your relationship will be confirmed during a cutscene in the Trespassers DLC. And now she's a Roman's option. Is that so? It's almost like there's no continuity whatsoever. What if your Inquisitor, Roman's Harden? But it doesn't matter. And I remember someone, someone saying that the Trespasser DLC was a core part of the story for in Inquisition. So everything that happened in Trespasser, like the Trespasser DLC, whether you played it or not, it's canon. And it's part of the main story. So, what happens if you're Inquisitor Romans Harden? Is that an option? And they didn't invite this man to play the game. He's writing their hard, and they didn't invite him to play the game. Your choices don't matter. What you think, you know, it's canon in your story doesn't matter. But the development of the Veil Guard hasn't exactly been smooth sailing, to say the least. It's gone through more than three major reboots. We kick things off with Mike Laidlaw's vision of spies into Winter, then shifted gears to a live service multiplayer game under Matthew Goldman, aiming for long-term gameplay and revenue. And mm -hmm. now we're back to a single-player RPG with... And what do you think happened in between you know all these <laughs> changes a lot of people are like no they've been sitting in this game for like so long they knew exactly what they were doing they haven't known what they're doing with this game since the conception since they sat down 10 years ago and be like okay we have to do the next one they've been fighting in that <laughs> meeting room for 10 years and people just have been living just jump in ship because they knew it was gonna sink. Solas is the villain. No, he cannot be the villain. People like him too much. But literally, we set him up to be the villain. No, I don't. Okay. Okay. And you're sitting there and telling me, oh no, we knew exactly what we were doing. This is the most complete Dragon Age. But at the same time, you're telling me that the most complete Dragon Age, which should be the culmination of every choice I've ever made. If it's the most complete Dragon Age game, why does nothing that I've done before this point matter at all? It should be the culmination of it. It should be like, this is it. This is where it all unravels, but it doesn't. It's almost like they don't have a clue about what they're doing because these people were not the main and lead developers of the project to begin with, the game director has changed how many times? The creative director has probably changed as many. No one knows what they're doing because the people that had the first thought of like, okay, maybe we should go this direction. Those people have left. Not that they had a good idea what they were doing with the franchise to begin with either because everyone that made Dragon Age good and created it and knew exactly what they wanted wanted it to be in, in how they wanted to like unravel and tell the story they're all gone but even the people that you know tried to make Velgard something like this thing this concept this project they left so that project got like tossed around like a f whore and just here we are <laughs> and the fact that people are just like going like to war for this game because they're being used their feelings and, and their identities and their emotions are being used against them. They're just being used as swords and shields for this game. They're being completely gaslit. They're being used as free PR. And it's crazy to me that they cannot see this. And they're just so willing to say that everyone else is a bigot and transphobic and we just hate them and we wish they were dead and we just wish that they didn't have any representation anywhere in the world and it's like bestie 
It's not about you. We're not mad at you. I don't care about you. I don't care about you as an individual. I do care about a franchise that has been, you know, my favorite franchise for decades since I was a teenager. You just end up like this. That's what I care about. I care about my feelings. I don't care about your feelings. The same way that you don't care about mine. Like, it's not about you. When I'm complaining about this game, I'm never complaining about, you know, oh, why did they lay the trans woman? Of course. No. Why did they lay the Sims 4 like developer work on an RPG? That's what I, I want to know. I don't care if she's trans or, or f alien or I don't give a f Why is a f Sims 4 the worst Sims in the history of humankind? Why is she in charge of this game? Why is the cinematic like director or whatever from Inquisition the creative director for Veilguard? I'll tell you why. Because everyone else who was officially in those positions and knew what they were doing left or got fired. That's why. It's because Sweet Baby has been, you know, showing their f fist up EA's rectum for many, many years. And they have probably been like whispering in their ears like you don't there's a lot of white men in this team. There's a lot of white men here. Oh, they know what they're doing. They've been, you know, veterans in in their respective fields for decades. They're white and men. You should <laughs> you should hire other people. Oh, but they're not they don't know what they're doing. Like they're really good in in their positions in these certain games, but here I don't think you have to hire them. You have to you have to hire them. And here we are. Because if you start f hiring people for the color of their skin and who they f in their private time, you get products that are made by people that have no idea. If you hire me, you hire me to make a video game. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to ruin it. But oh, because I feel a position, I feel which is just so f dumb because isn't that just racism to just be picked because of the color of your skin like oh this is your role play it play it well like isn't that dehumanizing that you're just completely like singled out and just stripped bare just to the color of your skin or your sexuality isn't that everything that people are trying to fight against like, oh, I don't want to be seen just for the color of my skin. I am more than the sum of my parts. Isn't that the whole point? Like, I want to be seen because of my skills. Because I can do this. Isn't that what equality is about? Or am I crazy? I might be crazy. I've been feeling crazy. Because you just say, I say all of this. And someone is gonna be on Twitter being like, oh, she was, uh, she was being racist and transphobic in, on stream again. Bitch, where? I care about my life and about what I do and how I feel, okay? And I feel like this game is gonna be ass. And that's my f You wanna be inclusive so bad and you're like writing about diversity in a game, but where's the diversity really? Oh, you can make a chubby character. What about making fat characters? Oh, you know, you see, what about chubby characters? What about curvy women? What about them? I don't, I don't know, maybe they don't exist. Maybe, you know, it was our imaginations all along. Maybe. What about buff, like really buff men or really buff women? Like really over the top buff women. What if I want to be super buff? I can. It's always the middle ground, always the safest route. Because God forbid you f trigger the modern audience. They're trying to just PG 13 everything. They're trying to make everything palatable. Everything is, you know, it's beautiful, it isn't. But it's like, it's soft and, and clean. There's no like raw edges or tears or blood or gore. There's nothing. It's always, you know, beautiful. And like you're playing The Sims 4 modded to hell and back. That's why.
That's why. They're trying to target an audience that it's not there. The same way that Dustborn tried to target the modern audience only for them to like be dropped like a sack of hot potatoes. Because it's almost like they're only writing and they're only like rising to the bait of, hey, we made this for you. Like LGBT community, we, we made this just for you. This product, it's just for you. People are going to be really mad though. Can you guys defend us on Twitter? Can you like, you know, take up arms against all the bigots and racists and just homophobic pieces of shit that hate this product just because it's queer? It's not because it's a bad product. No, no, no. Don't look at it. To, it it's not because it's a bad product. It's because we made it just for you because you are our audience and they hate you. So you need to hate them back. And you guys need to like fight against each other and call each other slurs and just fight about everything but what makes the game a bad game and ignore that part until the game is out and we can like make money off of you and the more they push it down our throats and the more they're like oh it's not for you this game is not for you you're a tourist F you it's not for you it's like who is it for hate unites when people hate the same thing we are loyal to each other, you know what I mean? And I just have a feeling that they're just going to get swept away in just a wave of reality check. And I'm here for it. I wish I was wrong. I wish I could just like sit here and be like, oh, I am rage baiting. I'm a grifter. Actually, I think it's going to be game of the year. But I, I, I don't. <laughs> I genuinely fucking don't. I think it's going to be incredibly like mid. It's going to be a video game and it's going to drag because you know that it's going to take at least two hours to finish the tutorial area just so you guys cannot return the game to Steam. The Twitter audience, and you know, and I know that they're not going to buy the game. Yeah, we love it. We, we love this game. Game of the year. They're not going to show up. When all is said and done, they're not going to show up in the way Bethesda fanboys showed up for Starfield, even though they ended up like disliking it. They're not going to show up. They're not. <laughs> and that's just the reality of it. Is It is what it is. Because at least with Starfield, it can be so heavily modded. And the same thing with Fallout 4, that you can basically make new games out of them. I feel like the Bethesda fanboys are more fans of the Bethesda modders than of Bethesda. I don't think they're going to manage that with Dragon Age because they don't realize that people have forgotten about it. And that's why they try so hard to like reboot it and make it like so digestible. So anyone that hasn't been familiar with any of their other games is going to be like, oh, yeah, sure. Oh, you don't have to play the other games for this. That's cool. That's what the entire f premise of the game is about. It's like, oh, you can play this even though, if, even if you haven't played the other ones. It's irrelevant. The Dragon Age franchise has become irrelevant. They let it just go into obscurity for 10 years. And the only people that truly have cared about it, it's people that have been playing it since day f one. And that's just the reality of it. And it's the original audience that you should be trying to get with your game. The modern, like the modern audience. Pull up Baldur's Gate 3. Try to please the people that you know are going to buy the video game. And if you're like confident in your product and confident in your abilities and skill, then the game will sell. If you are sure that you are making the franchise proud and you're going to make the original fan base of this game like excited about it. No, like, I want to play it. I want to play the f*** of this game. And you get that going. Like you are just staying true to your roots and to everything that made the game great. The game is going to sell. It is. Because people will see, people can like complain about it all they want, but then they're going to do what they did with Baldur's Gate 3. They're going to like sit there and play it and they're going to be like, you know what? It's a good game. Even if it's not for me, it's a, it's, objectively a good game but when you take everything that make the game great in the franchise and the name that you're supposed to be carrying great and you're just like stripping it 
into the most basic and bare bones like form that it can get just so it can go down easy for people that play The Sims 4, Stardew Valley, that play Valorant, then you're just doing yourself, the original fan base, and your reputation as a company a f disservice. And I'm not gonna sit here and just like let you just ruin my favorite franchise and not hear me complain about it. I'm just not gonna sit here and be like, oh well, it's not for me, I'll just play something else. Because it was supposed to be for me. And I'm not saying that as a, oh, it's because I'm a woman, I'm a cis woman, and I'm white, and I'm straight. No. I'm an original fan of the franchise. None of that should matter. Like, your, your sex, your gender, your sexuality, your race shouldn't matter when you play in a video game. You should sit there and enjoy the f game. So I'm a gamer, and I've been playing games since I was f 11 or 12. I'm not the original audience because I'm cis and I'm straight and I'm white. It's because I have been there since day one, just drinking the lore and enjoying the characters and daydreaming and theorizing about, oh my God, what are they gonna do with this bit of lore? And what are they gonna do with that? And to find out that they're gonna do absolutely f nothing because apparently it's not relevant, it doesn't f matter, pisses me the f off. And guess what? I'm not the only one. So, and not all of us can be grifters and rage baiters. Some of us maybe are just, you know, pissed that you're just destroying something that could have been so f good. That could have been a great game. And we're not here for it.